So a question that I've been getting asked a lot recently uh, on the website is regarding uh, rosewoods and uh, if they are banned or what is going on with them. And the short answer is, well, basically, yes, they're banned now. So if you take a look at the updated CITES uh, appendices, uh, you'll notice a new listing on there and it just says uh, Delbergia SPP. So basically, uh, Delbergia is uh, kind of the botanical designation for uh, where all true rosewoods come from. That also includes other woods like uh, tulip wood or kingwood or cocobolo. Those are all uh, Delbergia species as well as um, African blackwood. And there's a few others as well that don't technically have the name rosewood you know, in their common name, but they're still uh, Delbergia species. So what in the world is going on here? Let's take a look. Wood. Okay, so before we get started, we need to have a little bit of background information. So what do I mean when I say banned? Does this mean that the cops are going to come down to your shop and uh, take away all your wood at gunpoint? Probably not. Not unless you have some serious problems. That's not what I'm talking about here. So when I say banned, it all starts with uh, an organization called CITES. It's an acronym. It stands for Convention. Let's see here. Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species. So the emphasis is on international. So the impact of this uh, ban, this restriction, is on uh, wood crossing international borders. So if you got roast wood in your basement, got it in your shop, you've got it in somewhere, uh, you're cool. You've got it. Nothing to worry about, but where did that wood come from? How do you get more? Where are you going to get it from? Um, most of the wood, most of the exotic woods that uh, some woodworkers work with come from another country. So the issue will then be how are you going to uh, continue getting it or can we continue getting it? So that's where things get interesting. So in a nutshell, CITES uh, keeps a list, if you will, of uh, what they would consider endangered species or... Um, species that are regulated or restricted in international trade. So their list is divided into three different sections or tiers, um, which they call appendices. So there's um, Appendix 1. Appendix 1 is probably the most stringent uh, part of the list. So the most famous one that we probably know about is uh, Brazilian rosewood. Uh, that is an Appendix 1 uh, listed species. Uh, it has been since, I think, 1992. So that one is basically uh, can't cross international borders and also finished products uh, can't cross international borders as well so uh, maybe you've heard horror stories of people that have lost their guitar or something when they're trying to travel with it because it's made of brazilian rosewood uh, so that would be uh, an example of appendix one now appendix two is the next one down from that it's not quite as uh, critical of a status as uh, appendix one um, those are what they would consider uh, vulnerable species so are ones that they may not be directly uh, threatened with extinction, but they feel that they need to be regulated and protected uh, to prevent that from happening. So that's just a step down. So Appendix 3 is uh, a bigger step down uh, in terms of the escalation of it. It's uh, generally only like one specific country, and that's basically that country saying, hey, we, we need help in uh, regulating and keeping after uh, this species. Will you help us to enforce uh, what we're trying to, to do uh, with this species. So that's uh, Appendix 3. And as I said, CITES is kind of an international uh, organization, and they have um, what are called parties, and they're basically just a fancy word for, uh, for countries. So there's different countries that are, um, they have, get together in what are called conventions. So every roughly every three years, they get together and have a convention of the parties. So that means that they will... Um, take a look at the list of what they have already in terms of uh, maybe maybe a species is not no longer needing to be protected. It's on the rebound and they can take it off. Or, or maybe uh, something new is on the radar that they need to, to look at and that they can add more to it. So, uh, and just this last fall, uh, it was convention of the parties number 17 for CITES, and that was in uh, South Africa. So what was decided in South Africa was, um, among other things, to list 
the Delbergia genus, the entire, all the species in it, uh, on Appendix 2. So that was probably the big thing, big news, at least for us woodworkers, uh, coming out of that. Now, it might seem kind of curious that they listed an entire genus, uh, because if you actually go on the IUCN Red List website, you'll see a lot of the Delbergia species, well, not a lot, but a few of them at least, they're not even considered uh, at risk. Um, if you look at their status, they're even considered uh, least concern, I think is the designation they have, or maybe lower risk is another one. Uh, and there are a few species there um, that have no risk of extinction and no real concern uh, that they would be exploited. So you almost would wonder, well, why would they list the entire genus if this is the case? Why go to such an extreme? So at the risk of oversimplifying something, if I could boil it down to a single word, I would say that the one single word that describes everything that has gone on in the last uh, few months regarding rosewood, it would be China. Now, I'm not saying that there's not other countries in the world that use rosewood, um, including the United States of America, where I am, that maybe we use maybe our more than our fair share of rosewoods. But when you think of the extreme uh, length that they went to in banning the entire Delbergia genus, um, it's just about entirely due to a situation going on in China right now. So something, I guess, big is happening uh, right now. It's actually been happening for several years, but um, something big is kind of unfolding that is um, causing a lot of the this concern that we're seeing here. So while I don't claim to have a perfect picture of the culture and the traditions of China, uh, I, I feel like I do have enough information to at least uh, give you guys a, a brief overview of what's going on and uh, just an explanation as to um, what's occurring. So long story short, in China they have, I guess, this um, maybe this tradition or this cultural uh, enjoyment of rosewood. And they even have a special name for it. I think it's uh, Hongmu. I think is how you pronounce it, but it's, it's basically, uh, would be roughly translated into redwood, but, um, I guess a better translation might be just rosewood. Um, so they even have, uh, they even take it so seriously that they even have, uh, a document that has standardized which species are considered homo and which aren't. And there's, there are eight different categories. I think I counted 33 currently, uh, different species that are in different, eight different categories, uh, that make up this, uh, homo. Uh, rosewood label. So it's interesting when you look at that list. Um, I mean, it's written in Chinese, but uh, thankfully they have the the Latin name, so I know what they're talking about. Yeah, even though the whole thing is in Chinese, at least there's a little bit of English there, or I guess Romanized uh, alphabet that I can read that's in Latin, so I can see the the species that they're listing. And I mean, even though the the top tier ones are Asian, or you know, in somewhere near Asia. Um, or India or places like that. Um, kind of the, the lower tier ones are from other places like Africa or Central America or South America. Uh, so it seems like they're broadening out their, um, species that they're trying to, to use as the, as the stockpiles around where they are are diminishing. Um, and it's interesting because, uh, I'll just read. This is from the CITES resolution or the CITES proposal that they had. This is the from the proposal that they passed. This is just a quick little excerpt. It said, Illegal logging is a prevalent problem in Central America. For instance, it was estimated in 2003 that up to 85% of the total harvest in broadleaf forests in Honduras was illegal. There is very little information on the volume of international trade, although coca-bola wood is available from numerous sources online. And I can definitely attest to that. I actually, you know, I've got the two newest, I mean, it just, just the timing is so interesting. I got the two newest ads from, uh, I guess I would say the two biggest, uh, woodworking chains that I know in my area in the United States, which is, uh, both, uh, Rockler and Wood, Woodcraft. This one says, uh, sale starts January 7th. So it's just like right now. Um, and I don't know if you can even see this. Maybe, uh, I don't know if I can zoom in enough, but I mean, it's just right there. Coca-Bolo pen blanks. I mean, that they're on sale. Save 60% off Coca-Bolo pen blanks. And then with 
with Woodcraft, same deal. Let's see what, what wood is on sale. Good through January 26, 2017. So this is, again, just current right now. Uh, what is on sale at Woodcraft? So let me look right there. I don't know if you can see or not, but it says Coca Bolo right there. 30% off Coca Bolo right there. So I would definitely say that, uh, at least with Coca Bolo, using that, that uh, example, they're definitely still in supply, even though they've been uh, CITES listed for, I think, at least two years now. So, um, I mean, I, to me, I had no idea. You know, I, I just I go into a wood store. And I see a cool looking wood. I'm like, oh, that's orange and red and black. Is that looks so cool? I just and I just, you know, I got some guacamole. I mean, I, it used to be my favorite wood. I used to make uh, salt trees and all kinds of stuff out of guacamole. So, um, you know, I'm not trying to like blame anyone or anything like that. It's just people just don't know sometimes. They just don't know what's going on. Uh, but it's interesting, you know. It goes on the 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 CITES resolution. It says. Extensive illegal trade in rosewoods has been reported, raising concerns that it has accelerated in recent years. And it gives a uh, reference of the article they're talking about. Seizures of illegally trafficked timber in Guatemala suggest there is an organized smuggling ring capable of exporting large quantities. The demand for Delbergia retusa, that's the Latin name for cocobolo, uh, from the Darien region of Panama has been described as, quote, out of control with, quote, hundreds of settlers looting the species. Uh, during the period from 2011 to 2014, 38 shipments and vehicles with a total amount of 906,244 cubic meters of Delbergia timber of Delbergia Stevensoni, that's uh, Honduran rosewood, uh, D. retusa, again, of Cocobolo, and Delbergia species of illegal origin were confiscated in Guatemala almost two times the CITES timber reported as legally exported from the same period. Um, so that's that's pretty crazy that two times more illegal lumber is leaving or even just getting caught, even getting confiscated than what's legally leaving. And then the last sentence that kind of links us back to China says, uh, of these 38 shipments that were confiscated, uh, it says, with the exception of two shipments destined to Honduras and El Salvador, all the other shipments were destined to Asia. So, uh, so he, basically, here's here's what's going on. Here's the problem: is that China is an enormous country. Uh, I think it's over 1.3 billion people in China right now, and they have a growing, I guess, middle class is my, what you might call it, and they like rosewood. I mean, can you blame them? I mean, I, it's it's a beautiful wood, but the demand is unprecedented. I mean, it's just I, I can't think of any equivalent um, in the world of wood uh, to this level of demand that we're seeing uh, for rosewood. It's just it's through the roof. It's skyrocketing. So what happens when demand goes way way up? Well, for one thing, prices go way way up, and then when prices go way way up, people start looking for. They start looking for wood. They start looking for rosewood, wherever they can get it. Um, and just with this level of money changing hands and this level of, I guess, commerce, you might call it, uh, changing hands or being driven, um, it's just kind of human nature. Bad things will start to happen. It's just, uh, I hate to say it, but the study's proposal had this to say, and this is kind of what makes it sad is, um, Homu trade, that's homu is, remember the Chinese word for uh, rosewood. Homu trade is also linked to and drives violence in source and transit countries. In West Africa, homu species are known as blood timbers due to connections between illegal homu trade and rebel group uprisings. For example, in the Senegalese Casamans, in Cote d'Ivoire, and in northern Nigeria and territories controlled by the Muslim extremist group Boko Haram. In Thailand, more than 150 forest rangers, police, soldiers, and illegal loggers have been killed in gunfights during Rosewood enforcement operations in recent years. Um, so that's kind of sad, you know, that, that it has to come to this, that, you know, you wish it weren't so, but that's kind of what it came down to. They, they banned the entire Delbergia uh, genus 
and um, you know whether you agree with it or don't agree with it or think they went too far or you know whether or not it will actually be effective you can kind of see why they took action why they did something now whether or not it's going to work or whether or not it's the right thing you can kind of understand now why they did something um, I guess one of the last uh, questions that might be lingering is uh, why the whole genus I explained earlier that there are some species that are just not threatened I believe that the issue is twofold now first of all when you have wood that is that valuable, uh, the demand is so high, the wood is that valuable that people are going to just start to seek out substitutes. They're going to find um, woods that look like it or that, that you could pass off as that wood um, if it's worth enough. I mean, you thought, you know, you thought if you want an Amazon or eBay and you're buying, you thought you were buying a brand name thing and you get a Chinese knockoff, you thought that was bad. Try Rosewood. I mean, that's... Um, it's bound to happen, and so you see this uh, kind of this ripple effect as uh, the true species run out. They just find the next closest thing, and the next closest thing, and the next closest thing. So the the CITES uh, again, the CITES proposal has has this to say. I'll just re I'll just uh, quote this quick. It says, "Species shifting as species become commercially extinct is a common practice. For instance, with the commercial extinction of Dalbergia odorifera." Uh, which is a Chinese species that I've never actually seen for sale myself, uh, and Pterocarpus santalinus uh, in India, the trade of Dalbergia cochichenensis, I think I said that right, that's kind of a mouthful, uh, grew rapidly and it became the most sought after homo, homo species globally. That would be, that, that species is uh, Thai rosewood or Siamese rosewood is uh, what it's referring to there. Um, and as it was over exploited the main species now dominating the homo trade in Southeast Asia are uh, Delbergia oliveri, uh, Delbergia bariensis. Uh, those are just other kinds, I think that's like Burmese rosewood, other kinds of rosewood that are similar. Um, Pterocarpus macrocarpus, that's a kind of paduk. In 2014, an estimated 229,796 cubic meters of Dalbergia oliveri logs were traded internationally. More and more species of Dalbergia are entering the trade worldwide as stocks of once abundant species are being depleted. Traffickers exploit any legal loophole to smuggle illegal timber. Traffickers have repeatedly taken advantage of the current gaps in the CITES listing, misdeclaring Dalber so this is one example, misdeclaring Dalbergia retusa as cocobolo as the unregulated and similarly or and similar looking Dalbergia bariensis in violation of national national moratoriums and CITES listings. Now, in Guatemala, the documents accompanying rosewood shipments often recorded the export as recycling material such as cardboard, junk or scrap metal, or other t timber species. Dalbergia granadillo logs are mixed with other species in ship containers to disguise the shipments from authorities since there are no permits to log this protected species. Um, so you see kind of like the loopholes that they leave. So going right along with that idea of um, kind of knockoffs or second tier uh, timbers is there's actually two other species or two other uh, types of wood that were also added to the list along with uh, the rosewoods and that is bobinga and also um, a wood that's not really commonly seen in America is uh, it's called coso. It's a pterocarpus species. Um, that I think probably is more more uh, popular in China, but uh, but these these additions also uh, I would say are almost entirely driven by the situation uh, that's happening in China. So CITES again going back to the proposal uh, this one this time for the the bubinga one. The woods of the different bubinga species, the aesthetic qualities of which are close to those of the Asian rosewood species, which are most highly prized in the homu tradition, have gradually become established as the first choice al alternative for this burgeoning sector. In the course of the past five years, the expansion of this homu demand for the supply of the Chinese markets has led to unprecedented interest in Bubinga in the main producing countries of its range, particularly in Gabun and Cameroon. So that's the first reason I would say why they uh, banned the entire Delbergia genus. But I think the second reason, uh, which is much more practical, 
uh, is simply the issue of identification. That, uh, and this maybe is kind of a good lesson for those that are trying to identify wood, that even professionals, even experts, even those that are trained in identifying different kinds of wood, when they see, let's say, a guitar or something else, a piece of furniture that's finished, a uh, piece of finished wood, it's very difficult to just look at it and to be able to tell what kind of wood it is down to the species level to say, okay, this is actually Brazilian rosewood. It's not Amazon rosewood. Um, and uh, to be able to distinguish that just uh, by that uh, visual aspect. So, um, and again, go back to the CITES and it says, uh, while some identification guides for a few Delbergia species exist, and one of them is actually the, the USDA's uh, guide for how to tell Brazilian rosewood from Amazon rosewood. Um, but it says the, the distinction between an identification of individual species is very difficult for non-professionals and sometimes even for experts, making it a problem for enforcement and customs officers to comply correctly with inspection and identification of CITES listed Delbergia tree and product shipments. So you can see now why uh, they had to ban the entire genus. That they didn't want to leave any loopholes. They didn't want to leave any uh, wiggle room. Uh, they didn't want to uh, have uh, one species that's protected, another one that looks just like it, or that could maybe potentially be confused with it, um, left open and not protected, and they could just mislabel it as that would. Uh, so hopefully you can see why they took action and why they just blanket covered the whole, all the rosewoods. So what does that mean in a practical sense? Um, or I guess what, let's boil it down. What actually happened and what is kosher and what's not, what's restricted, what's not, and, uh, what's, what's at stake here. Um, summarize, uh, in all Delbergia species are on appendix two, as well as all Bubinga species are on appendix two. And also that, I guess, more obscure wood, uh, Koso is also on appendix two. Now, the rest of the story is in the annotations. So what that means is if, if, a, if a species is listed on the CITES appendices somewhere and it doesn't have an annotation, I mean, it's not like the, the fine print. If it doesn't have an annotation, that pretty much means you can't use anything. That you can't use wood, you can't use veneer, you can't use even things that are made from the wood, like a finished product. Uh, the best example is um, Brazilian rosewood. It does not have an annotation next to it. It's just simply, you can't use any of it in any form. You can't cross any international borders with it. Now with this new listing, uh, if you look at the listing, there's um, a little, I guess you might call it fine print. Um, and it's got an annotation and the annotation is number 15. That's a new annotation uh, for the CITES appendix. So this new annotation number 15 says, or let me back up. Uh, so the COSO that I mentioned that doesn't have any, um, that has no annotation as well. So that's just completely, you know, out. Um, you can't, you know, make anything with it. You can't uh, sell the raw wood or anything like that. Uh, so that one's out. But with uh, the Bubinga and the Rosewoods, uh, there are, uh, you might want to call them loopholes. I don't know. There are some things that the annotation reads. So um, annotation 15 says uh, part, you know, it's A, B, C, D. There's four parts to it. This is kind of getting into some complex stuff, but, uh, a is A, uh, flower, uh, leaves, flowers, pollen, fruits, and seeds. So we don't care about that. Just want the wood. We don't care about leaves and pollen and all that stuff. So that doesn't matter. That, that's out. Okay, so B, non-commercial exports of a maximum total weight of 10 kilograms per shipment. Okay, so that's, that's interesting. Um, so that basically means if you're not going to sell something, um, and it weighs less than 10 kilograms, which is roughly 22 pounds for those in the US. Um, if it weighs less than 22 pounds and it's not a commercial product, it's just for your personal use, then it's okay. So, um, and I believe that they put this in for specifically for musical instruments. So if you have a guitar, let's say, and it uses um, you know, a, some kind of a rosewood uh, let's just say uh, Coca Bolo for the fretboard, or you know, it has uh, Amazon rosewood for the back, or something like that. Um, that would be as long as it's not 22 pounds. That should be okay. Now I say it should be okay because 
you never know with these other foreign countries. You never know if they're not on the right page or whatever. But theoretically, hopefully, you should be okay with that. Now, that, that still doesn't change Brazilian rosewood. Brazilian rosewood is still the same as it's always been. You can't go anywhere with it. It's just, you know, off the off the off the chart. It's not it's not an option. But for all the other ones, um, if it's just for your personal use, you're not selling it, and it's again less than 22 pounds, uh, you should be good with it. So that's B. Um, I'm going back to there's A B C D. Uh, this is again I'm going to annotation number 15. These are kind of like I guess you call the loopholes. Um, Part C says parts and derivatives of Dalbergia cochichensis. I don't know how to, that's a long word, I'm sorry, which are covered by annotation number four. And if you go to annotation number four, it's pretty much of no use. I mean, it's it basically all it says is that um, the only thing it exempts is seeds, pollen, uh, flowers, seedling and tissue cultures, stems, fruits, and there's nothing about wood. So basically, when it comes to Thai rosewood, it looks like that's a step up, and that is actually completely restricted, and it's not going to be having that loophole. Uh, so Thai rosewood looks like that's a step up. Uh, and then lastly is D, which is parts and derivatives of Dalbergia species originated and exported from Mexico, which are covered under annotation number six. So under, if you go to number six, that basically just covers logs, sawn wood, veneer sheets, and plywood. So basically the actual raw wood products. So what that means is, I mean, it's probably not applicable to very many people that are probably watching this video, but if um, a finished rosewood product for sale uh, originates in Mexico, it would be exempted. Whereas all the other rosewoods, if it's for commercial sale, whether it's raw wood or finished products, those are all going to be restricted now. So there's no commercial movement of that wood. Again, the, the loophole, I guess, would be if it's less than 22 pounds and for non-commercial purposes. So there you have it. Rosewood, more or less, is banned for commercial purposes uh, when it comes to international trade. Rosewood as well as bobinga. Um, the only loophole, again, is if it's less than 22 pounds and is for non-commercial purposes. So hopefully kind of understand now what's going on. China is something big is happening and it's in China and um, you know you can't really blame them. I'm sure as Americans or wherever you are you probably enjoy Rosewood as much as anybody. It's just that it's a really big country and uh, that the demand is uh, just through the roof right now. So that calls for whether you like it or not calls for some changes. So that's what's going on. Hopefully that helped. Uh, if you have any questions, um, you can try to ask me, but I, <laughs> I, I'm not going to be held legally responsible for, you know, if you lose something or something gets confiscated or anything like that. So I would say if you have any important questions, I would contact the, you know, the governmental body that is handling with this kind of stuff. But if you just have, you know, other kinds of questions or comments, you can feel free to leave them in the comments. But otherwise, for the important stuff, I wouldn't take any chances. Don't take it from me. Go to the authorities directly and say, hey, is this going to work for me? Um, what do you think of this? And just tell them what you're trying to do. So, thanks.